And we're back again. How is everybody doing? Everybody, everybody's doing really, really good today or this morning. It's 4 a.m. And we're doing a special Halloween edition from the House of Havoc, part four of the Miasma Maze. Miasma Maze. When we last saw Larnell, Letitia, and Sarah, they had their backs to a cornfield that was on, inflamed and burning to keep the aliens that had been pursuing them. They weren't, they weren't even part of the um, attraction that they're on. And the house in front of them was making all these weird noises, moaning, creeping, and they can hear shouting, shouting coming from the plantation house, which is the final stop on the tour if you want to call it a tour, because this tour is killing everybody. It's killed everybody up to the point where they're at. And they've made it farther than any, further than anybody else. And there was a million dollar bonus at the end. That's told by a commentator that they haven't seen, but they just, they just keep hearing the voice over a loudspeaker. So, Lonel and, La and Letitia, they stop and they're looking, and Sarah's still pressing forward, and Lionel tells her to stop and hold tight for a few seconds. And as they look back, they can hear the aliens scampering through the crops in the cornfield, trying to figure out a way around the fire. And Sarah keeps pressing forward, and when she does, she notices that there's, she, she, there's a door that's unlocked on the plantation house. Now, the, the house looks pretty tattered, and but the doors look pretty solid, but it's open. So she opens the door and then the aliens start coming around, you know, making a wider sweep so they can get around the fire. But the fire's spreading pretty good. You can actually hear the popcorn from the heat burning the cornfields. And everywhere there are headstones and, and, you know, unmarked graves. And then there's a rustling in those. And then, you guessed it, zombies start coming up and out of the grave sites. I mean, you can call them zombies, you can call them the dead, the walking dead, the, the, the whatever you want to call it. It's like the biblical apocalypse when they say the dead walk shall walk the earth. So they come up and they're coming out. And it's a lot of, about a dozen. And they're pushing them even further as they're jumping and jumping over Letitia and Larnell start going forward and they're jumping over the hands and Larnell still has the big scythe and he's cutting arms off as he's, you know, pushing forward and making his way to the plantation house. And so Letitia is in, in tow. She's, she's right behind him. Then they go in and they lock the doors and they board the doors. They start putting furniture, old furniture, in front of the doors, and they try to start uh, just barricading the doors the best way that they can. And the plantation house is pretty big. And then the commentator comes over the speaker again. Just a few more steps, right? You get out of this house, and you've got a million dollars waiting on you. The money is right out that door there. And suitcase in a suitcase or two, but well, you know what? Let's make it two suitcases. And you survive. That second suitcase that you see, it's got five hundred thousand dollars in it. That's five hundred thousand dollars a piece for you guys. You Americans, I know how you love your money. So tally all. And he stops talking. And Letitia is saying, this place is just weird. Everything about this place is weird. And they can still hear the, the zombies beating on the door. But to their surprise, Sarah looks out the other window and she can see that the aliens are coming out and the aliens are on fire. And they're actually fighting. Some of the aliens are actually fighting the zombies. The zombies are biting the aliens. The aliens seem to be unaffected by the bite. And they're actually dragging the zombies away, some of the zombies away. And the zombies are, and the, when, they, when the aliens actually drag them away, 
they put them into a certain particular spot and then light comes out of the sky and, the, and then the zombie body is just zipped up into the air by unseen forces. And they continue to beat on the door and they continue to fight outside of the building because remember, the aliens are actually not part of this program. They're just there, they're just there to do their thing and abduct and experiment and probe from what we can gather. And Larnell is looking out and he said, man, this has got to be the weirdest shit I've ever seen. Aliens fighting zombies. This is just ridiculous. This is crazy. And then Sarah said, after all we've seen tonight, you, nothing can surprise me about what we're seeing. And then Letitia looks up and she says, maybe those will. And you can see shadow people coming down the stairs. And then they stop at the foot of the stairwell and the three back up. And Larnell is, Larnell is standing there with his scythe, ready to do battle. And the ladies have their sickles and they're ready to do battle as well. But they don't know if, you know, how do you cut a shallow person? So tables start flying at them. Glasses start flying at them. Old couches, old chairs, everything just starts circling around the room and flying at them. And they duck and they, they roll around on the floor to try to keep from getting hit. And then some of them are actually hit. And one of the shadow people grab Sarah by the throat by one hand and run her across the room and to the wall with one hand and holds her up. Larnell sees this and he takes the scythe that he has and he swings at the, um, the shadow person. He says, let her go. And when he does, it cuts it in half and it screams in pain and it just drops. And then his body, his body dissipates like fine smoke and one has Letitia pinned down and he's doing the same thing trying to kill her and Larnell takes the um, scythe and cuts it in half same thing happens and they're definitely the floors the floors cracking open and they're having to jump they're having to jump over it make sure that they don't fall into the cracks uh, more shallow people are coming down Larnell He's trying to figure out the best, you know, try, trying to figure out how to save the ladies and save himself in the process. And he cuts one of the shadow people right down the middle, splits them right down the middle. And the other ones see this and the, re the other ones stop. It's like maybe two or three more left and they stop. And they can still hear the beating on the door from the zombies trying to come in. And so when this happens, Letitia said, we're not going to make it, are we? And Larnell said, the hell we're not going to make it. We're going to make it for Spalding. And so hands start coming in through the windows. So Larnell cuts a couple of them off. Some of them are zombies and some of them are aliens. And he made, he accidentally, they can't get through the front door. Ladies are pushing towards the front door. And they jumped over the crack and the space is in the floor. And the ceiling starts coming in, caving in on them. And they try to open the front door and they can't, they can't get it open. So Larnell is really pissed off at this point. And he just says, damn it. What do we, you know, I, I don't know what to do. And so when he does this, he accidentally swings the scythe into the wall. And when he does, the wall starts bleeding. And so he looks around, he's thinking the walls are bleeding. And, and the house actually makes a, like a, like some, like makes a moaning noise. And when it does, some of the chaos in the, in the uh, house stops, stops. Now, mind you, there's still swirling debris in there, uh, spiritual activity, and things are just flying all over the place, but some of it actually stops. So Larnell has a theory, so he stabs the floor with the scythe. And then the floor starts cracking. It stops cracking open. But there's a big opening in the floor that's going to take a, a major jump to get across. So when Larnell recognizes this, he stabs the door that the um, aliens and the, and the uh, zombies are trying to break through. And then he stabs the wall. And blood just keeps pouring from those, those areas. Basically, the blood's going to make the floor slick. So whatever comes through, it'll have a hard time getting to it. And possibly it'll slide into the crack that's open up in the floor. Because down as you look into the floor, there's like a a bluish green flame fire down there. Larnell circles around 
as they break through, as the zombies and the aliens break through the walls and they break through the door. He jumps over the, the uh, opening in the floor. As the flames try to claim him, he jumps over. He almost he does it like a, 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 a pole vault with the sight. So he, when he does, some of the zombies that make their way in, they fall into the pit. They fall into the crack in the ground. And Larnell slashes the door, and the door, the, the ladies, and he are freed. So they go through the front door. The zombies and the aliens are still kind of fighting. And if you see them fighting and wrestling each other all the way down through the blue flame, blue greenish flames, burning and yelling and screaming and hollering and whatever else they can do, whatever sounds they can muster up before they meet their demise. And Larnell, Letitia, and Sarah stagger out again, bruised and battered and tired, tired and exhausted. So we just throw, we can throw tired right out the window. They're exhausted. And they're scrambling and they're grabbing, they're holding on to the front of their pants. And Sarah sits down. Letitia is on her knees. And then she comes to one knee. And Larnell just kind of holds the sight and he's just standing there. They can see the money cases. And some parts of them don't want the money. And then they actually see the host of the miasma maze. And he's clapping. Bravo, bravo. You've done it. You blokes have done it. You traversed this maze. No one's ever made it as far as you've done it. And you can still hear the old creepers inside still partying it up, trying to get out and at you. But they can't. They've got limited reach. Now those aliens, I've got to look more into that because they are not part of our program here. Larnell looks at him and says, man, I owe you an ass whooping for Spalding. And they tense up, the three of them tense up, and they step to him. He said, hold on, hold on now. Don't be tossers here, okay? Shite, I've given you one point, one million, five hundred thousand dollars. That's five hundred thousand dollars for each of you. Pretty amazing, right? So he's still got his hand, he's got his hands up, and then they circle him. Man, they really can't see his face because he's got on this, this paint and a top hat and a gentleman's tuxedo, if you've ever seen one of those from like the 1800s. And he turns his back to the building. And Larnell jabs at him with the scythe and he jumps back. Now, now, again, Mike, take your money and go on. You've won. And Letitia tells him at what cost? A lot of people have died in this maze and didn't know what this maze was about. They, they, they had no idea that they were going to be fighting for their lives. And they didn't make it. If we're the only one that's made it, this is like it's been going on for quite some time because it said you guys have been 10 years running. Well, yeah, yeah. But box to all of that, you've made it. No hard feelings, right? And Sarah says, the hell you say no hard feelings. I just lost my man. We just lost our friend. And that's all you can say is this money? We didn't even sign up for this. Well, no one does. It's called life. Sometimes it throws you curveballs. You either get hit or you knock it out of the park. And you guys have knocked it right out of the park, straight out. And as he does this, hands break through the front door. And they grab a hold of him. And he's screaming, help me, help me, help me, please help me. Don't lock these things, take me away, okay? My zombies can't stop these aliens, there's something, help me. And he's screaming and trying to reason and be rational. And Lionel says, yeah, help you just like you helped us in Spalding, right? Let's see how this plays out for you, mate. 
is what Larnell says with his British accent. And they drag him through the door. And just above, there's a, there's a huge metallic reflective disc. A huge beam of light comes over, breaks through the top of the, the, the plantation house. And it sucks everything up inside of it. The host and all go straight up to this, to this metallic disc. And the metallic disc looks like it's just going to stand there for a few minutes. It just hovers. It looks as though it's just going to stand there and not move. And it hovers there for a few seconds. Flashes a couple of lights. And it's gone. The three of them are just too worn down to even be shocked. Now, mind you, they are a little bit shocked about what they've seen because everything is burning behind them. And then the house actually catches on fire on this Halloween night. And they're trying to figure out the best course of action. And Larnell says, well, I guess the best thing we can do, who, who wants the money, who doesn't want to take the money? None of them want to take the money, but they realize that they could pay a lot of bills, it could take care of a lot of things, and they've come this far, they may as well take it. And Sarah says, well, I'll just make sure that this money is used in the right way for Spalding. I will carry on his memory for the rest of my life, and the rest of them say the same thing. That they're going to carry on with the money. And make sure they honor him and, and memorialize their friend. They've got some justice tonight because the host is gone. He's no more. And that's a good thing. This world has been reduced in evil by just a small, minute portion, but nonetheless has been reduced. So they all take the money and they circle back all the way around the plantation as it's on fire and, get, and to get to their car. And the only thing that's there is the, the, the horse and carriage driver. Or should I say, not the horse and carriage driver. But the only thing that's left is, now there is a horse and carriage there. Those are for the people that really want to be nostalgic. But that's not who took them to where they needed to go. It was a guy, you know, in Halloween garb that was driving a tractor pulling a trailer for that hayride, hay bale experience. The horse and carriages for a more nostalgic and romantic endeavor. But they get in the cars and you can just see, um, they're just quiet. They drink some water that they had in the vehicle and they're just trying, they're just basically driving off, trying to get over the shock of what just happened. And, uh, they're going to try to report this to somebody and see if the authorities can come. But as soon as they, say, they you know, as soon as they're having those thoughts, you know, they can see ambulances and fire trucks and police cars going in the opposite direction, coming in, coming in the opposite, coming in the direction that they're leaving from. So that part is taken care of. And at this point, all they can do is move forward and live their life because they just survived the most haunted miasma maze attraction in the last 10 years but barely and that's been miasma maze part four special halloween edition you guys like comment share and subscribe again this is done to give you guys an outlet but today is special because it's halloween it's trick-or-treat and i try to have these spooky scary stories uh, weekly. I have published work already on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Nuke, and Kindle. It's pretty early in the morning, so 
a little tired, but like I say, the show must go on. I gotta make sure that you guys have something that you can listen to and something that, you know, if you're going home from work, you can, or if you're at work, you got some stories that can, you know, get you through the night. So feel free again to support the work if, um, at dollar sign outrage 95. Any, any, any amount helps. I'm not picky. I'm not greedy. Just trying to make sure that uh, I can help, you know, it helps with the money or anything that you donate or just a like and a share. Any of that helps because it, it allows me to get the exposure to the work and also or to the channel. And also it gives me the ability to pay for editing and um, artists and other little, little things that may pop up and be needed to make sure that the books and publications go out properly. But again, this is L.A. Kendrick from the House of Havoc. Remember, check the dark recesses of your homes. Check your closets. Check under your beds. And if you happen to work at night, make sure you check your surroundings when you step outside. Check under your cars because you never know what's lurking in the dark waiting to make you a story. And this has been L.A. Kendrick bringing you the heavy. Happy Halloween, everybody. Thanks for your time.